Um, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, Bele Shenoy, uh, the managing editor of MicroAsia Journal of Modern Mycology. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for joining in today for the master class uh, by Professor Darbe Jairama Bhatt. Uh, you know, and Professor Bhatt is familiar to almost everybody in this audience. Uh, if uh, some of us are not aware of his work or complete work, I will give a brief introduction about him after some time. Uh, before that, let me give some information about uh, my MycoAsia Masterclass. You know, we started this lecture series uh, maybe two months back. This is just to get, uh, you know, get the gurus of mycology to this platform and uh, get, uh, you know, inspire the end budding mycologists of the world with the insightful talks on mycology. Maybe the, these gurus have spent some 30, 40 years in mycology doing research, in teaching, in mentoring people. They would be definitely giving some useful insights for the benefit of uh, budding mycologists. That is the idea behind a Myco Asia Masterclass uh, lecture series. So for, we had a couple of lectures by Professor Surenarayan under this master class lecture series. The first one was about endophile, second one was about how to write research papers, third one by Dr. Sunil Kumar Deshmukh about you know, drug molecules or drug discovery actually. Today we have one of the legends of uh, uh, mycology is not restricted to India. World, all of, uh, people, mycologists working in the field of uh, I mean, my fungal taxonomy are very much aware of his work. He is none other than Professor Darpe Jairama Bhatt. Thank you very much, sir. Welcome to the uh, this uh, uh, program. Thank you very much for accepting to give this talk uh, for MycoAsia and for the benefit of, uh, you know, budding mycologists of the world. Uh, before I hand over this uh, platform to you, let me give a brief introduction about you to the audience. Some of, maybe some of them are not aware of your work. Uh, let me read out from the you know, his CV. Professor Bhatt is from, actually originally from a place called Darbe. So there is, therefore his name, his first name is Darbe actually. Darbe is a uh, small place in Karnataka state. He was born in 1949 and uh, he did his, uh, you know, BSc and MSc in biosciences from the University of Mysore then did the post MSc diploma in mycology and plant pathology and PhD in botany and mycology uh, and DSc from the University of Madras. So he is one of the, uh, he was one of the students of a prof a legendary professor C.V. Subramanian at, uh, at Subramanian, uh, Subramanian at the University of CAS Botany, you know, at the University of Madras. Uh, professor Bud, after his PhD, he worked as an associate professor at the Department of Biology, Asmara University in Ethiopia. Uh, then he worked as a research scientist in the Department of Applied Botany, Mangalore Uni University. Then he joined Goa University as a reader in microbiology. Then he, he rose to the uh, uh, position of professor of botany in, in Goa University. He served as a professor from 1990 to 2011. I think in 2011, he retired from Goa University. Then he spent many more years doing research and mentoring young students. Uh, he, was a, he was a visiting professor in the School of Science, Mifa Luang University, Thailand. Then he spent some time in Department of Botany, Goa University, then Dali University, Kunming, China. And uh, of course, currently he is a, he's a is working as a distinguished scientist fellow of, of King Saud University of Saudi Arabia and supervising biology teaching in a high school that is Vishnu Gupta Vishwa Vidya Peet in Gokarna, Karnataka. About this uh, taxonomic work, he will be talking about his uh, work in this presentation. I will not be spending much time on that. He has been on the many committees and he has got lots of recognition for his work because he has spent around, uh, around 45 years in mycology, mycological research, mycological education and mentoring of young people, including myself. Uh, with this brief introduction, uh, thank you very much, Professor Bert, again, uh, for your kindness. Uh, I hope... Uh, uh, I'm sure uh, this uh, today's audience will be, uh, you know, very much benefited by your experience, uh, your insights, and uh, sharing of knowledge. All to you, Professor Bhatt. Thank you. Thank you, Damodar, for your uh, you know nice introduction. Thank you very much. Uh, I have, you know, titled uh, this talk 
as fungal taxonomy for beginners. First of all, I want to wish you all a very happy new year, 2024. Let this year be very good to all of us. Uh, fungal taxonomic studies uh, for beginners. Uh, this is actually the title was suggested by Dr. Damas Shadai himself. I, I often ask, who are the beginners? All of us are beginners, actually, because learning is a continuous process. And if you feel at any point of time that uh, we have learned enough, I think uh, that is not a good uh, way of, uh, you know, keeping uh, track of the system what's happening around. So all of us are beginners. And I'll share, just share with you all what I know a bit of uh, this taxonomy of fungi. Now, taxonomy uh, deals with the two issues, identification and grouping of organisms. And this is the definition I took from the dictionary of fungi. Taxonomy aims to qualify the living organisms into coherent hierarchical units called taxa, singular taxon, that have names and whose members share similar features. Taxonomy also integrates diverse character-based data in a phylogenetic framework, which allows us to use the knowledge in, of shared biological properties of taxa. I will try to explain this topic. Um, taxonomy of fungi has two issues, I said. One is uh, identification of fungi. Second one is classification. I kept it on either side here. Identification essentially refers to naming. What is the name of a fungus? Why we should have a name? All of us know why I'm called Jairambat because so that you can recognize me. Same thing applies to a fungus also. So essentially it is picking up the specimen and putting it in the right pigeon hole. When we do this exercise, we don't need to really to worry about the fungal classification. Uh, you know, that's another exercise. How this fungus is related to other fungi, that is actually the classification. So the taxonomy deals with these two issues and we will uh, try to understand this. And I will also um, explain this issue under different headings. That is, what is the history of fungal taxonomy? Then how we did this work at our point of time, that is some 50 years ago. And what is the present status? These are the three issues I will discuss altogether. If you look at the development of fungal taxonomy, um, there's a big history, although it's only a few hundred years. The early 18th century, Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist, he grouped the entire living organisms into two kingdoms, plantae and animalia. Because at his time, part of time, uh, only what they could see through naked eye, they tried to group them. So fungi and the other microscopic organisms came only after the invention of microscope. So fungi, protozoa, bacteria, uh, after the Anton Leeuwenhoek, a Dutch micro, microbiologist, his uh, contribution is essentially so in the uh, 1950s, many other tools came like electron microscope, cell wall chemistry. All these were used to understand the microorganisms and even the macroorganisms. So we could really see the differences between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. So this, uh, there's a big history of uh, the development of the taxonomy of these living organisms. And uh, Robert Whittaker, an American ecologist, he grouped the, at that point of time, with all the evidences available, and uh, he grouped them to five kingdom classification. That's what he did at that time. And we know all this. It's all in, the, in our uh, textbooks, the elementary textbooks. 
act, even then, the fungi are kept along with the plant kingdom. Uh, look at the definition of fungi as we have, this I copied from the dictionary of fungi. They are eukaryotic organisms, a chlorophyllous. Then their uh, morphology ranges from unicellular to filamentous. They are branched vegetative bodies and the mode of nutrition is absorptive type and reproduction by spores. This is actually the reason why fungi are kept in the plant kingdom. Uh, even now, fungi, even the traditionally or even in the contemporary times, fungi are taught along with the botany, not separately. In few universities, they deal with the fungi separately. Now, if, if you, from a mycologist's point of view, Fungi are actually a separate kingdom of their own. And uh, these are the reasons. They are microscopic, uni um, heterotrophic in their nutrition, mode of nutrition. Cell wall contains chitin and uh, absorptive mode of nutrition. Reproduction by formation of spores, be it sexual or asexual. And from an ecological standpoint, they degrade all the organic matter and in fact, their the enzyme machinery shows they even outstrip bacteria in their ability to degrade um, from plastic to hydrocarbons. Mostly, the fungi live as saprophs, and there are some pathogens of plants and animals, and few are actually mutualistic. And their habitat range from terrestrial to aquatic and endobiotic. So. It's a huge diverse group and this is the traditional classification if you see Bessies and Webster's classification and uh, this is the classification is actually I've taken from Dr. Damodar uh, Damodar Shanae from his one of his publications morphology based segregation fungi are class uh, group that are fungi and uh, sub kingdom Mixomycota and eumycota, then all these uh, different uh, divisions. Okay, th th this we know. The historical developments of fungal taxonomy, if you see, Carl Linnaeus, who did the fungal the plant taxonomy, and he, in fact, he is said to be the father of plant taxonomy because the binomial nomenclature was introduced by him. Linnaeus and his contemporaries grouped the organisms based on what they saw, phenotypic resemblances or differences in morphology. That was actually the criteria used in those days. Um, unfortunately, linear system had problems with fungal nomenclature because taxonomic ranks were remained artificial. And uh, today we see that these they did not carry good biological information. And people used whatever criteria they felt good enough. And, uh, oh, this is how it should be. So the taxonomies group as they want. That's why I wrote here that it was like, as we think, or up to us. In, in other words, I have an example here. If you see, uh, M.C. Cook, in fact, say, British mycologist, and he was the origin, uh, to be, begin with, he started as a school teacher. Then he was, he also worked in the, as a um, curator in the Indian museum during the British colonial time. Cook described a fungus called Agaricus oedipus. And look, in different point of time, this fungus, uh, has been shifted into different genera and different families. And this was simply because different taxonomists gave different weightage to characters. This was the problem with the morphology. Everyone knew this, but it continued further. And we do have this problem, not only in the higher fungi, even in the um, I mean, macroscopic fungi, even in the microscopic ones, like microfungi. In many ascomycids, 
asexual and sexual states of the same fungus had two distinct names. In fact, it's a major taxon on aberration, dual nomenclature. For example, Aspergillus nudulens, the sexual phase had name as Emericella nudulens. I will come to that later. Now, the fungal classification started with this Swedish botanist Elias Fries. He was also called as the father of mycology. Fries divided the fungi into four classes in 1821. Coniomycetes, Hyphomycetes, Gastromycetes, and Hymenomycetes. Merely by looking at their morphology. Later, with more microscopic observations, evidences, Friesian system evolved into better understanding of microfungi. And coniomycetes included both ascomycota and deuteromycota. Those days. Then hyphomycetes recognized and entire hyphomycetes were kept separately those days. There are other important personalities who contributed in a big way for fungal taxonomy. I will highlight a few names. I have to highlight here. E.S.E.J. Corda is a Zek mycologist. He was the first one to use microscope in fungal studies. I put a picture of one fungus, Stachybotrys carterum. This fungus normally appears on a book, kept it in the shelf. If you keep a book for a couple of years in a shelf and then remove and open the first page, you will see a fungus that is Stachybotrys carterum. That's how the name carterum, species name. Why I put this picture? Because uh, called identified and named this as Stachybotrys. And even today, this name stands, this genus name. And that is the beauty of the morphology, which is still a, a good uh, character, useful in identification of fungi. He was the first one to provide evidences through um, microscope. And he wrote a book called Iconos Fungorum. Um, wonderful you know, contribution of those days. Then two important names which you will see in the history are Tulane brothers, C.R. Tulane and L.R. Tulane. Both of them are French mycologists. Uh, I have written here, he's a physician, mycologist, and is a wonderful illustrator. C.R. Tulane, the younger one, and L.R. Tulane, he was actually a medical mycologist. And what is their contribution? Is the, They microscopically searched for physical connection of sexual and asexual states of the fungi. And here is one illustration. They wrote a book in three volumes called Selecta Fungorum Carpologia. All the three volumes are available. The copies are available in Madras University, Botany Department Library. If anyone is interested, you should see them because these are the original illustrations. Now, what is the significance of this illustration is he has shown the physical connection between these ascocarps and some of the conidial forms. So that is the, so he was, the, they were the first one. Holomorphic status of the fungus. Idea of unification of sexual and asexual states commenced with the Tulane brothers. They are the, that is the most significant uh, findings of those days. So that was the early history. And there are three visible era in taxonomic studies of fungi. I grouped them as Sakardown era, Hugesian era, and modern era, just for the sake of convenience. Now, in Sakardown era, um, from the time of freeze to Sakardo, 1821 to 1920. And Sakardo is a Italian mycologist from Venice. And he wrote, what is his contribution, major contribution? 
He wrote 24 volumes. I think it's in the next page. And Sakardown system was followed by Clements and Share, the British mycologist. Again, in 1931, they wrote a book called Denera of Fungi, where all the fungi described until then, the genera, 437 pages, they gave a compilation of those fungi, those days. So remember, those days, collection of literature was much tough, not like these days. One has to write and get the information from other mycologists. So if, in spite of those difficulties, they did a great deal of contribution to the understanding of fungi. Then Hughesian era, uh, Dr. E. W. Mason, the director of IMI, International Mycological Institute, in those days. Then Stan Hughes, these are the two, I will come to the details later. Then modern era, which we are now presently, the higher level classification based on the molecular studies. Now, Saccharidone vera is very significant because what Sakardo did those days in from 1888, the first volume to 1920, in 26 volumes called Silog Fungorum. In fact, the last two volumes were compiled by his son, a medical, a physician, he compiled them and they Latinized all the earlier described fungi and compiled them in these volumes. I think this is a remarkable contribution. This is my understanding because at one place, all the fungi described were put together and along with their descriptions and their uh, the specimens details, where from they are collected and where they are deposited. Those details were given for each fungus include at the species level which were described until 1888 and the last volume 1924 has information until 1920. Now besides he also wrote some 140 papers on conidial fungi and he called his classification as, as chromotaxia because he gave enormous import, import, importance for color of the fungi. That is color of the spores, pigmentation, and spore morphology. And the type of fruiting bodies. What kind of fruiting bodies these fungi produce. We know today that it is an artificial system. Because color changes with the ecology based on the environment and uh, spore morphology also changes. So, but even then, those days, that is the first pragmatic effort of classifying the fungi, grouping the fungi in some system. So we believe that is a significant contribution. So we called it as Sakardon system. And it is used by many Mycologists later on, like Lindu, then Clements and Share, Einstein and Bisbee, who wrote the dist first uh, dictionary of fungi. So, um, classification of fungi in 1971 is essentially based on the Saccharidone system and Hughesian system. And that's, that's we, I have already shown this traditional classification. Now, okay, fungal taxonomy evolved over the time. Beginning of the last century, oh, sorry, yeah, uh, one minute. Uh, yes, in since 1930, in addition to morphology, development of ascomata and the asexual morphs. So, not what you see, but how they evolved. So, both became the important diagnostic characters, and the understanding those days was. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. That the development actually reflects the phylogenetic evidences. And uh, both morphology and development of morphology was used. So when I joined for my doctoral work, these were the two criteria we had used as a, important for classification. 
and identification of the fungi. And some major contributions to those days, a French mycologist by name Willemin, he showed what is a phyllite. I will come to that a little later. And how the slime in Conidia is an important E. W. Mason in CMI, who was a director in 1940s, he showed this the important criteria. And after Saccharido, Hughesian era is this an important milestone. In 1950s, morphology and developmental, uh, the ontogeny were the two major characters. And Stan Hughes, a Canadian uh, uh, mycologist, uh, I think it's uh, yes, Canadian mycologist. So he worked in the um, in agriculture department in Canada as a plant pathologist and mycologist, and uh, his contribution said to be one of the major milestones using this ontogeny, the de conidium development and ascal development, sexual morph and asexual morphs. These two criteria they used, and. Um, during his time, many other mycologists worked on the same issues, like Professor C. V. Subramanian, my PhD guide, and uh, was the director of um, Center for Advanced Studies in Botany in uh, University of Madras, one of the giants in uh, uh, fungal studies. He wrote major volumes on fungi, especially on hyphomycetes. Then C. Tubaki from uh, Japan, D. L. Barron from Canada, M. B. Ellis from England, B. C. Sutton again from Britain. All these people made made major contribution to our understanding of fungi. And I take up this issue separately, this conidiogenesis, because um, this is a during 1970s to 1990s. Deuteromycotina was uh, studied separately and uh, asexual fungi were studied in a separate grouping. So conidiogenesis or conidial development was a major criteria. And types of conidia and the kinds of conidia, how they evolved, arthritic, blastic, phyllitic, analytic, threatic, base oxic and ganglia, this type of the, based on the conidial development, they segregated the groups of fungi into this, and they also made um, different groups of fungi, uh, try to classify them based on the ontogeny, conidium development. And since Zaccardo, until 2018, approximately now we have a nearly 30,000 species of Deuteromycotin, asexually reproducing fungi. We have in 1480 genera. And all these are well described earlier separately. Now, as and when their sexual phases are connected, number one. Number two, when we have their uh, molecular data available, they are transferred to the ascomycota or basidiomycota. So that is the development taking place now. Now, how we studied this, how developmental conidia studied, conidiogenesis. First, you isolate the fungus um, in culture by directly or by single spore isolation. This is how we did those days. Uh, either you directly take this conidial, put it in the petri plate with the um, antibiotic medium. Uh, antibiotic embedded medium and observe the fungal growth and then you isolate single from a single conidium or ascospore you can get a pure culture it's a very standard method and we used the riddle slide culture technique those days very simple technique but the development of conidia across the world they use the riddle slide culture technique one of the it's all forgotten these days, but this was one of the most simple and widely used technique to understand the development of the conidial or ascomycetous fungi. One of the lovely methods we use. 
you cut a small block of agar put it on a sterile petri plate uh, petri plate with the um, moist chamber and put a slide on that and put a block of agar everything in a sterile condition and inoculate the edges of this agar block with the, your desired fungus put a cover glass on the top of this and examine after a few days you will uh, making a semi permanent slide you can see the development of the conidia at different stages so the conidium ontogeny can be studied like this so we did this and that was my phd thesis developmental morphology of hypocreal in fungi so i studied the uh, different genera nectria hypocreal calonectria and so on thyronectria and so on all the hypocreal in fungi and from a single spore i studied the entire development of the fungus both sexual and asexual morphs the holomorphs or oh, this is a, all these pictures i have taken from uh, i have given the credit here for, uh, especially from bryce kendrick's book the whole fifth kingdom um this is the arthritic type of uh, development arthritic meaning joints so the fungal mycelium grows and divides into uh where the septation is there they divides into uh, they divided into conidia one there are many genera showing this kind of uh, conidia i have written here the i understand uh, damodar will later on will give you the um um the entire uh, lecture for you so you can see this i have given the examples like powdery mildews all the powdery mildews show this kind of conidiogenesis arthritic type is a basic type then uh, geomyces and some of the human pathogens also they show this kind of it's not seen in the higher ascomycetes then the second one is the blastic the majority of the ascomycetes they have this kind of conidial development it's a blastic type so just like budding in the east and there are different types like monoblastic then or polyblastic solitary or sympodial and this jab species you know fungi like cladosporium then sporidesmium all these show this kind of conidial development then again there are acropetal basipetal that is uh, it's all different types of conidial development you see it's a slightly an advanced type than the arthritic type next one phyllidic type this is said to be the most stabilized one amongst the ascomycetes phyllidic type where a collar type a small flower waste like conidogen cell and at the tip there is a collar conidogen cell and from that the conidium development takes place and you look at the genera which produce this kind of conidogenesis like aspergillus penicillium then calera fusiums trichoderma so all, almost all the members of sorderials they show this a number of five mycety and even the pycnidal fungi they show this kind of conidogenesis then within the phyllides it's a huge diversity in uh, some of them show dry conidial type and wet conidial type i mean in a dry type conidia are in chains and in a slightly bog then even within the collar there are different some with a huge collar at the tip some without any collar so there is lots of variations and all these were used as a taxonomic criteria in identifying the fungi and analytic type is a slightly advanced one from the phyllidic type where every time when a new conidium develops the conidium genus locus here it shifts to a higher level so you will see a collar type the annelation type of uh, development in other words you based on the number of annelations you can count the number of conidia developed that was not possible with the phyllite because there the conidia genus locus doesn't shift here 
it doesn't shift further only the conidia develop further so that kind of uh, advancement takes place in the analytic type and the tritic type is a uh, another type of conidia development where the conidia primordium emerges through a preformed pore so first the a pore is take formed in the conidial conidiophore and through this pore the conidial primordium young conidium emerges it's a complicated procedure but this is happening in many journals like alternaria corularia helminthosporium all major plant pathogenic fungi major groups like bipolaris all this uh, fungi they show this kind of conidiogenesis and uh, mostly in the plant pathogenic fungi we see this and this is said to be most complicated in the uh, conidiogenesis basoxic type and species like species of arthrinium cordella spagazinia endocalyx they show this what happens here is from the conidiogenous mother cell a conidiogenous hypha develops and from this conidiogenous hypha conidial development takes place so this is said to be a highly advanced one but this is taking place and lots of details are known about these kind of fungi but if you put them in the in the in a phylogenetic tree you will see many of these genera are grouping together so that's an evidence for us that this kind of morphological understanding also reflects their phylogeny ganglier type is is actually this uh, this is the uh, the uh, last one uh, this ganglier type of conidium was proposed by professor cv subramanian many of the other many other mycologists did not agree with this but this is actually the chlamydospore formation which is taking place in many fungi Chlamydospores are formed when the fungus wants to undergo hibernation. In an adverse condition, many fungi like Humicola, Microsporum. Suppose Microsporum infects a human uh, system or any of the animals. Uh, they are all superficial mycosis causing fungi. And these, if you scrape the skin, human skin in where it is infected, like eczema or ringworm you will see the chlamydospores because that's an adverse condition but fungus survives by formation of this kind of spores so um, morphology and development based on the saccharidon system ruled the entire last century because that was the understanding we had those days and deuteromycotina the asexual reproducing fungi were studied under two groups hyphomycids and pseudomycids all these are now invalid taxonomic entity i am giving you this idea only to know that this kind of development took place over the years in the entire last century and all these families which were proposed based on the morphological characters are now not really valid these are not accepted these days but i am giving this to the this particular picture to tell you that conidiogenesis kind of pattern in the high uh, hypomycetes as well i'll only highlight two groups here like hypocreasae and urotials these two groups if you see here hypocreals uh yeah hypocreasae <coughs> sorry especially nectriaceae and bionectriaceae you see the all the fungi coming under this group are phyletic similarly in the urotails without exception they show this kind of conidiogenesis in their asexual morphs they are all phyletic forms and within this phyletic forms again we see some similarity at even at higher taxonomic level like um, hypocreolian fungi all the hypocreolian fungi without exception they are phyletic then slimy conidia they produce 
without exception. And in the Eurotiers, without exception, all of them show dry conidia. So I believe these morphological features have enormous taxonomic significance even now. Okay, that is about the conidium ontogeny. In 1950s to 1990s, until the turn of this century, until the beginning of this century, numerous asexually reproducing fungi were disc described. And some of the outstanding publications, public publications I have listed here, like MBLEs, these are all in big volumes. Then C. V. Subramanian, Tubaki, Matsusima, Carmichael, and Kendrick describe volumes. They compile them in the form of monographs. You should see them to know how much of work has been done those days. But I put this one. Uh, uh, my I worked with Professor Bryce Kendrick for six months in 1993 in the University of Waterloo. Uh, uh, a micro a mycologist of a rare character. I mean, enormous knowledge and. Uh, a wonderful personality and also his knowledge and vision if you see he worked those days when the morphology was a dominant taxonomic feature character but he tried to unify them the fungi um, he conducted two conferences called first kananaskis conference in 1971 and second con Kananaskis conference in 1980. He wrote volumes. One is conidial fungi, second one is whole fungus. He said, we should look at the fungus from its the complete form, that is holomorph, that is asexual morph and sexual morph. He also wrote a paper in uh, Cydovia in 1989 uh, subdivision Deuteromycotina is a fungal chimera. If you see this paper, you will know what kind of idea he had those days. And uh, he is a, uh, he writes me every year once, Professor Kendrick. And uh, now it's a modern era, and uh, we should attribute and regard this modern era for this paper. David Hibbert's paper, nine, 2007, a higher level phylogenetic classification of the fungi, published in Mycological Research. Uh, it's a big paper. This paper offers an overall understanding of the fungi at molecular level and provides a focused roadmap for future fungal tax uh, systematics. And uh, in fact, this paper was the baseline data based on which and the knowledge gained until 2010 the international botanical congress in melbourne took a decision that uh, one fungus should have one name so a revolution in fungal taxonomy took place after 1990s and uh, we know what we are what is this this is what is educated today in a big way by the uh, leaders of Myco Asia group, Dr. Shanai, then Dr. Uh, Rohit, uh, because I understand this is very important now in future. Only with this we should move. Uh, besides microscope-based morphology, molecular analysis of PCR amplified uh, the uh, ribosomal DNA genes with the multi-locus data sets, extensive taxon sampling, rigorous analytical approaches. Uh, this is numerous articles with the molecular data are now available. And we are in a tot with a new era. This And uh, this is the present systematic. I have given you the uh, traditional classification. And this is the modern system. Um, and molecular, this is the, the traditional system classification proposed by Ainsworth is actually polyphyletic and the modern system is monophyletic and uh, the modern approach is to look at the fungus as a continuum. 
I have given this uh, picture to tell you how we transformed from the olden times to the present. The earlier taxonomy was this. This pic, this slide explains everything. Look at this. Toad described in 1790. Tubular clearia vulgaris, a conidial fungus, a hyphomycet. It's a sporodocal fungus. It, this was in 1790. He described another genus, Nectria cinnabarina, in 1849, because it's a perithecial form, ascomycetous fungus. About uh, 50 years to 60 years difference. Two fungi, but if you look at this, this picture, both these two tubercularia vulgaris and nectrius in the barina are actually same fungus. One is the asexual state, and this another one the sexual state. That's the conidial state and the ascomacid state. So it was a taxonomic aberration those days, but that was the uh, we were not knowing. Those, those they were not knowing that this was the same fungus, but we know now that's why the future effort should be we should look at the fungus, uh, one fungus, one name from that angle. So that is about the kind of history to the present. I'm just giving you how I did my work because this is we have titled my talk as Fungal Taxonomy for Beginners. So this is primarily for beginners. How I want to explain how I did my work in the 1970s when I joined for my PhD. Since 1974-75, when I joined for my PhD, my guide, Professor C. Late Professor C. V. Subramanian, he gave me two well-identified cultures. He decided, he told me, look at this fungus. One was named. He gave me labeled two cultures. One tube was named as Fusarium disim cellulae. Another one, Monographilla nivalis. It was a sexual form. One was a asexual form. He said, he told me those days, and when I joined, maybe a week later after I joined for my PhD, he said, you work on these two fungi. I will meet you after two months. He wanted I to describe this, illustrate this fungus, and explain him why they are named so. So, Madras University Botany Laboratory those days had four or five of my senior colleagues. So I prepared slides. I grew this fungus. So during the course of time, I learned how to prepare media, how to isolate the fungus, how to inoculate, re-inoculate, and how to um, purify the culture. Many things we learned in the two months' time. And how how to look at the fungus under the microscope. What is the character we should see? Everything we studied those. So that is what was expected by a student to begin with. You must sit with the fungus. Then only you will learn. I often tell, the, I told this to if you sit more time with the laptop or mobile, probably you will learn less of fungi. You must sit with the microscope, you must sit with the fungus, then you will learn more about this. So, Fusarium disim cellular, I really studied these two fungi, uh, how the conidial. And interestingly, this fungus in culture produced its sexual state also. So, we studied the sexual. Um, it. I made the, I um, we dissected that using a microtome section. Then we looked at this section, different minute details of the fungus, the pure culture form, and similarly monographical element nivellus that fungus. So that is was the starting point, and uh, for nearly forty years I did this exercise of uh, studying the taxonomy and diversity of microfungi. I studied only the ascomycetus fungi and their the, in, in its entirety. And uh, as a uh, taxonomist or just a biodiversity study, 
I went around the Western Ghats region for 75 to 2011. That was the time uh, major focus was on ascomycids and they did lots of collections because I believed if you want to study the fungi, you must look at them. Then look at the different places and uh, look at all kinds of substrates from plant litter, foam, then endophytes, herbivore dung, dead insects, soils, everything where fungi grow everywhere. You can, you only have to think where you want to see the fungi. And we cultured them. And uh, most of them, most of the fungi, we brought them into pure culture, described them, and deposited the culture in the National Culture Collection repositories in Agar Research Institute in Pune and the Institute of Microbial Technology in Chandigarh. And we also maintained a reference culture in Goa and City Culture Collection, where I did most of my work. And uh, I'm showing these slides only to inspire the young people that uh, you should go out and collect the fungi. Um, if you hesitate or shy away from doing this, you will not be able to do much. Of course, many of these pictures I have put from my old age because just to uh, uh, give an idea that this is how you should do. If you want to collect from samples on pond, jump into a pond and collect them. This is what I did. I did this along with the, Dr. Tapan Chakravarti, who was um, the um, uh, scientist in Imtech, we went around and collected from a native place in Irde. There is a hot water spring where we collected samples. Then we didn't left any place. Most of the forests of the Western Guards, we went around. I and my students, we took even microscope along with us and looked at them in the evenings collected samples at different places, went around even northeast region, and uh, we had no hesitation. This is my one of my old pictures. Said. And the methods that we used where we collected samples and uh, temporary moist chamber we made, made the fungus to grow in the laboratory, and we looked, searched for fungal fruit bodies and fruiting bodies. We made slides, looked at the fungi, and uh, we prepared most of our initial cultures with water agar because fungus grows very slowly here. You can isolate them very easily. If you put a nutrient agar, fungus grows very vigorously, even the contamination. Some of the VD fungi also grow along with them. So only when you want to subculture them or finally to decide, put them in a potato dextrose agar medium. So, this is what we did, and uh, I said this Riddell's slide culture method, which we used developmental studies, and uh, this is the present method to supplement, or maybe which will in the coming times this will be the major uh, methodology for the confirmation of fungal taxonomy, that is molecular sequence analysis, which we know. Um, I, this is an idea about what uh, an ascomycid generally is. See, we studied all separately these two in our times. Fungus has two phases, ascomycidus fungus, asexual phase and sexual phase. They don't come in together. In nature, you will see sometimes only the asexual phase or only the sexual phase. So if you bring an asexual, let's say you collect the ascocarp, asco matter, cut open this and uh, remove the asco spores and put it on a agar, water agar, they will germinate, then bring them into culture and allow this culture to grow for some time and you may get the sexual phase or you may get a sexual phase. This is only a diagrammatic sketch I have shown. But you may get a coelomycete or you may get a hyphomycete. But this is how two phases, you can connect them in culture. 
physically you may not see them in nature that is why the saccharidon system persisted for a long time one organism separate names everyone knew it is a taxonomic aberration that uh, two names for the same fungus but this problem continued out of uh, you know compulsion rather um, the key morphological diagnostic features which we even today we do this a sexual phase how the mycelium is how the conidio matter conidio force conidiogenous cells and conidia similarly in the sexual phase asco matter then how is the uh, asco matter well whether it is a perithesium or apothecium or clistothesium whichever it is how this wall the layer then how is the centrum or hamathesium how are the assay and how are the ascospores i have given here a representation picture of a hypocreolin fungus and both is uh, asexual phase and sexual phase so these are the different uh, characters which we look for and one of the major references we had those days was the dictionary of fungi and uh, 7th to 10th edition 7th edition 1971 and we have the 10th edition 2008 um 10th edition has 21000 entries of generic names of fungi and uh, all the generic names of fungi those days and uh, one of the it's like a bible those days it was and the diagnosis of the families details of orders higher categories everything was available in this dictionary of fungi and uh, bibliography uh, the information about their metabolites mycotoxins everything was available at one place dictionary of fungi and uh, most of the labs or departments working with fungi had dictionary of fungi as a reference material those days the second reference material available for us those days the advanced literature the fungi volume 4a for ascomycetes fungi volume 4b for basidiomycetes fungi edited by einsworth in the group and then advanced literature is taxonomic review this was the reference material available for us and uh, this is the reference material uh, presently available for all the conidial fungi uh, the genera of five moisids by keith shuffled and a, um, uh, there are four authors uh, keith shuffled morgan jones walter gans and bryce kendry and uh, you must see this book because details on morphology including conidiogenesis distribution of the fungus host or substrate sexual state connections synonyms taxonomic notes and bibliography dna barcode details diagnostic key and beautiful lovely illustrations of the fungi it's a monumental work dr keith shuffert did a good friend of us he also came to goa in 2015 uh, he was the president of international mycological society those days and an excellent human being with whom dr chennai did his postdoc work uh, i value this book in a, you know with a, with high respect enormous respect so how should we look at the fungi in future i would advise collect the samples of fungi if you think you will get everything from the google or internet i think that's a mistake uh, you must first examine the fungus microscopically identify the fungus its morphology based on morphology and if you have facilities in the lab you establish a pure culture from single spore isolation it's very easy to isolate and uh, 
once you have the culture, then analyze the molecular sequence. Uh, now the methods are all standard available. You can also take help from the labs. Uh, there are many labs working on them and many senior mycologists in the country. And write your observations. Interact with the experts. I have written uh, last sentence, last slide. You will see I have written that you can ask me for any help. Publish your observations in good channels. You coll collaborate with the people. There are several labs and individuals working around with whom you can take help. We did this all along. Remember, most of us worked in collaboration with others. We never worked around. I, I have put this slide to tell you many new discoveries we made. Just as a sample slide I have put here. Um, all these are adding to our bio, uh, the fungal biodiversity of our country. Uh, many names, generic names, which we described over the time. I will give a few examples. This is the first fungus I described. A new fungus. A new species in a new genus. Bahu Sutra Bija Dwaya in 1977. Most of the beginners who are attending this lecture, you wouldn't have in there those days. Because this we published in the Canadian Journal of Monte. I value this paper in high esteem because this is a fungus brought me to the mycological world. And we collected this on coffee tweaks in Madikeri in India. In 1977, near Abbey Falls, and uh, this is the fungus, and this is the original drawing which I made in 1976, and uh, it's a phyletic fungus, produces flat this kind of conidia where there are appendages, and sexual morph is still unknown of this fungus. There are five species five other species and the uh, from its culture Dr. Shanai did some sequencing work and uh, my our other another student Dan Devi Penn who is presently completing her PhD in uh, Maple Wang University Thailand she did a also blast search using ITS sequence of the original culture which we deposited in the Netherlands culture collection in uh, 2000, no, in 1977, and it is clustering Cletosperials. And uh, this is the original specimen available in their herbarium. And uh, I have given some examples here why we need to do both morphology and uh, sequence analysis, molecular analysis. For example, this Acrodontium crateriform, this fungus, it is it's occurring in the uh, pitcher trap liquid of nectar. It's one of the, you know, uh, parasites, uh, the insectivorous plant. And uh, merely for on a microscopic Examination, you will feel this is an acrimonium because it's a simple hypha, conidiophore, and a young, tiny conidium. But when a molecular phylogenetic analysis was done, it was found to be a different fungus. It's very important to do both morphology and molecular sequence studies. Now, pithomyces flavors. It's a traditionally, it's a well-known fungus, Pithomyces. It was originally described in a uh, hundred years ago, this fungus. And uh, we recollect, many people collected and tried to know which is the sexual state of this fungus. Some described it as leptospirulina. Because both Leptospirulina and Pithomyces was found on the same twig. So they thought that is the connection. But when single spore isolation was done, it was found to be Astrospirilla 
very less. So this was done by Dr. Ashish and Pratibha. They also did the multigen phylogeny of this fungus and found out this is the exact taxonomic status of this fungus. Bahusandika indica, another fungus. Look at this. What happens when you do both morphology and molecular sequence studies? This was originally described in 1956 by a Professor C. V. Subramanian. Bahusandika. This is the fungus, 1956. And he described this fungus merely based on morphological studies of the specimen which he collected in Madhuravail near Madras, their field research laboratory. <coughs> and 2014, um, Dr. Ashish, uh, Ashish and uh, Pratibha, my students here, yeah. They brought this into culture and they did the phylogenetic analysis of Bhavsandika and they found out which is the its phylogenetic placement they did in the Pleosporales. So a genus or species described the morphology can be supplemented with the phylogenetic data after getting into future into culture at a later date. So this is a continuous exercise one can do. Uh, now, again, my st one of another student, Pooja and myself, you know, we did in 2007, we described a, a sexually reproducing fungus called Vamshapriya on bamboo. And uh, we described this as a cinematous fungus dose, purely on, based on morphology. And uh, my, our another student, CC, is a Chinese student from Mayfield Wang University. She looked at the, she did the culturing and sequencing and found out its exact taxonomic position in the Zion area. So you can, do the complete taxonomy of the fungus only by molecular sequence data. That is the uh, meaning of this kind of understanding. You know, the, she did the um, she did the physical connection, both the sexual and asexual phases. And uh, number of species were described on this fungus. Now there are many such fungi like Rattania, Citulifera, Natrogenia, Indica. Then all these are now, I have put purely pictures here, but we know the molecular sequence data of all these fungi and their exact taxonomic position in the phylogenetic tree. So culturing and phylogenetic studies also absolves us from duplicating the scientific events. Now, for example, here, Oreobesidium cassianum. This is again from, um, Ashish and Pratibha, I have taken the liberty of putting their studies here. And uh, if you look at this fungus, from a merely a morphology, this looks like a cinematous hyphomycin. If you bring it into culture, it looks like an yeast, like an oreobesidium. So it's a taxonomic position and a phylogenetic position. Uh, by phylogenetic studies is known only by the sequence studies. Torula goanensis, a new fungus described by the same group. And the, it was originally named as Pseudo Torula in 1958 by Professor Subramanian. Because those days he could see only by morphology of this fungus and he thought it is different from Torula. And he described it as Pseudo Torula. On molecular studies, it was found to be a species of Torula. So it is now recognized that the pseudo Torula became a synonym of Torula. So all these things can be done by combining these two, uh, the method, methodology. These are some of these fungi. I put this only to tell you, to show you how beautiful these fungi are. Because if you want to see the beauty of these fungi, 
you must look at them under the microscope. So look at this color of this fungus. So lovely they are and so uniform, both the uh, micro, under the microscope and the camera lucifer drawings of these fungi. Again, Rattania citulifera. It's a new genus which is described from rattans on the cane uh, found in the Western Ghats region here. And it's a lovely fungus, these fungi. This is my last slide. Um, I, I have put many things in this last slide. I will go very slowly with this slide. See, I advise all young scholars interested in fungal studies, taxonomic studies, to cultivate. I have given few this, I have taken the liberty to advise you because um, number one, my age, second one, that this is the reality. Uh, that if you want to be a good scholar, a good fungal uh, taxonomist, you must cultivate deep interest for any um, you know, understanding of anything in nature, be it uh, mycology or any other groups, you must have a deep interest. Don't look only for the degree. Then innate passion. See, I am now 74. My age is, but I have still interest because of the passion that I have. And dedicated work with the focus and enthusiasm. I wrote, I wrote many words here. Then only you will be successful. This is my uh, message. Microscope-based morphology of asexual or sexual morphs holds good in fungal um, identification studies. Still holds good. If you want to see the fungus, the only way is to look at them under the mouth. Probably in future, you will have some tools with which you can see without looking at the microscope, I guess, because anything is possible these days. When morphology is supplemented by molecular studies and phylogenetic analysis, we will have the complete taxonomy. And that should be my ultimate aim. And uh, I look forward to some of you taking up such researches. And uh, this is a message I say uh, to you. You should move with the time and the speed because it's also important to speed with which you should move. And please also note I'm willing to assist any one of you interested in learning fungi. I put a couple of pictures uh, here. This is an institute, a high school with which I am associated. I go there near Gokarna, Vishnu Uttashu Vidya Pitam. Um, I teach the young students there uh, some fascination about the biology of fungi. Uh, what is this imagination I have about the fungi? I teach the young students there in their own I go to their level and teach them. Um, then I also interact with the teachers there. I do this once in a while because that gives me enormous strength, positive energy rather. I do this, uh, go and spend some time with them. Uh, it's a model school rather because they also teach the traditional education in India. To, the, then I want to thank many of them whose I take I took the liberty in taking images from various sources. I thank all the original authors, Wikipedia public images, The Fifth Kingdom by Bryce Kendrick. I want uh, the beginners who are, who are here now to please go and see this. If you go to Google and write Fifth Kingdom, The Fifth Kingdom, you can get this book. And you can download this book because Professor Bais Kendrick is a, is a wonderful teacher. He was a wonderful teacher. He's now retired. He's in his 90s. And uh, he's a naturalist. Rather. You must see his contribution to mycology uh, in volumes, actually. And the genre of phyphomycids, I have a copy. I think few of us have copies of this book. Dr. Shanai only arranged this for us and uh, by Keith Shifford. Uh, then uh, I have taken lots of information from my students. They are all working in different places. I thank all of them because uh, 
that's what actually I made this lecture. Uh, my spe special thanks to Dr. Shanai and Dr. Rohit because they gave me this opportunity to speak to you. And I also thank, uh, I accept this fellowship because that, uh, because it keeps me, you know, touch in touch with fungi. So, and this picture, last one here in the corner here, I have taken when I went to Pune to Agarika Research Institute in, I think it was 2011. There was a conference called Science and Beyond. Yes, that is the science and beyond is the message. Must look beyond what is next. So I thought that gives you a lot of meaning. So thanks very much. I took some time. Uh, you are well, most welcome to ask me some questions. So I'll close this here. Once again, I thank you, every one of you, for your patient hearing. Um, uh, sir, sir, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Can you stop presenting? Sir, you can go back to your room and stop presenting. Uh, how I, I go back to? Minimize the PowerPoint. OK. okay. Go back to Chrome. One minute. Chrome, Chrome, Chrome. And uh, there is uh, that uh, the same button, sir. They are on but oh, OK. Yeah. OK, great. I mean, sir, thank you very much. It was a wonderful and a very inspiring uh, talk. Um, I'm sure uh, many of us uh, actually have uh, send in many messages in the chat box. You know, they are inspired by your talk. They found it very you know, helpful. They want to have a copy of the presentation slides. I mean, all will be given probably. Thanks yeah, for sure, sure, yes. But, but uh, I want to probably add some of my own comments uh, because uh, yeah. you, you are the one you you uh, you are the one who taught me hypomacy taxonomy in Hong Kong airport. I'm sure <laughs> remember that episode. Yeah. So my my own belief is that uh, taxonomy is a uh, basic science with the high application value. Okay, so our classification system uh, has information of, of around three lakh fungal species or fungal taxa, and that is of high predictive value. You know, we can predict whether a fungus belongs to this category or not. If it doesn't belong, we know. We can predict it. Probably it doesn't belong. It needs further studies. Similarly, our uh, identification, the part of taxonomy, is highly valuable because you, if you, if you, if you know this particular fungus belongs to this particular taxon or species, you can help in, uh, you know, maybe in plant pathology, medical mycology, many other aspects. Similarly, the nomenclature part of it. Yeah. If we, we have rules, we name them best basically as per the rules of the nomenclature. So there is some kind of stickness yeah. in there, and people use them. For example, there the Coltotrichum capsis was used for so many years, then it became Coltotrichum uh, truncatum, actually. Sorry, I think yeah. Glomerulus truncatum, I guess. Yeah. So this is how we, I, can, I want to just uh, argue that uh, the taxonomy is a basic science of with the high application value. But problem is, uh, can we ever have a highly predictive, stable, and utilitarian fungal taxonomy ever? Yeah. Um, see, uh, um, taxonomy has been the word taxonomy has been defined in many ways. You know. Many of the uh, those working with the uh, you know fungal chemistry those days when we were doing PhDs, um, they used to tell me that uh, taxonomy is a school teacher's pastime hobby. <laughs> what it means is what uh, they used to put us down, telling, "Are you are you doing something which is useless?" But uh, I we knew, you know, every individual, every organism should have a name. Uh, otherwise, how we will refer them? That is, that's a, so. That is the underlining point number one. Then, whether taxonomy is stable, I think it may not be because as and when we have newer tools, 
we will look into newer ideas and the taxonomy will always remain in a dynamic system. And then there are some genera which are exceptions like Pototrichum, Fusarium. There is a lot of plasticity even within the species, which is an enigma. We really don't know. Uh, I gave the, the, the first fungus which I touched in my PhD days, Fusarium decemcellular. Do you know that name is ch changed in uh, so many times? I also gave the example of the um, Agaricus udicus, which name given by Cook. It was like a football poured around so many families around over the period of time. So it will be like this in future also. But that should not deter us from working on this group. We should continue to look at them very objectively and see how best it will have a, like a recognition. It is like recognizing an organism. Each, so I am just sitting and sometimes thinking, if I don't have a name, what I would be? You know, we should think from that angle. No one will know who I am. So naming is very important, number one. And also to be, classify us. So this is an important branch of science. Although people, you know, but these days nobody underscores the, you know, I mean, uh, keeps apart the fungal taxonomy. It's given, it's a due weight age. And we should develop evolve a good system of classification in the course of time. And the efforts what we are doing through this Mycoasia is most appropriate and timely. And that's where I want to really, you know, thank both of you who have shouldered this responsibility. Uh, Damodar, yourself and uh, Rohit. I, I, I take this opportunity openly to express my, you know, appreciations and the gratitude for both of you because this is how we should move. Otherwise, it was, we were just attending some conferences in the earlier days, presenting our papers. But this is now has become most uh, dynamic platform and uh, it will continue to, uh, I'm, you know, it's my appreciation for that. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. We will have more discussion on it when I meet you in Goa. Yeah. Later in the in month. Uh, now I request Dr. Adesh Kumar, co-founder of Microvisia. If you are around, can you please ask your questions or you want to share something? Yeah, Adam, I am here. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you, but sir, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, you are one of the role yeah, model for us, and uh, we are continuing our legacy uh, with the uh, publication of many new species. So far, we published around. Uh, nine new genera and more than 30 species so far. So we are picking up uh, the same where you left the morphology and continuing with the uh, multi-gene sequencing and phylogeny. Sir, uh, my question is like uh, with the polyphasic taxonomic concepts uh, arrived, most of the youngsters are uh, uh, like leaning towards the ITS-based identification and uh, uh, trying to do a reverse taxonomy rather than following uh, morphology and uh, molecular uh, taxonomy. Even after sequencing ITS, it will not uh, make you to reach to the species level. So what's your uh, um, advice for such youngsters who are leaning towards molecular and uh, coming back to morphology? The number second question is about uh, the cryptic species. Uh, when it is uh, cryptic or semi-cryptic species, uh, what is the best way of dealing with it? Yeah, I think it doesn't matter which way you they want. It also, you know, you can play with these organisms, really. It doesn't matter. But I, I made a reference, I made a remark a little earlier that if you really want to see the fungus, you must look at them under the microscope. You know, that's the only way. Probably you will feel about the fungus with the molecular sequence, you know, IT all your sequence analysis. But it doesn't matter whether the reverse uh, exercise which they, but they, in future, who knows how it will stand or it will come. This is fair enough, you know, in the course of time. Uh, Damodar, you want to add anything for Rajesh? Uh, Rajesh, you know the answer, you know. <laughs> 
you are yes, a yes, you are a very indeed. good mic all these i am very happy with you no yes sir indeed but uh, listening from your uh, face itself is a great uh, you know addition that's why i asked yeah it is, it is a, you know i i, I respect uh, all approaches uh, we can't stand with the if you say okay only by <clears throat> one exercise we will be able to identify it's wrong we should move with the time this is what uh, i said it doesn't matter how they approach because it's not there is no written rule that first you look at the fungus then you i gave that kind of picture because that is what we did it doesn't matter because exactly. if you look at the uh, some of the uh, endobiotic uh, endophytes you know they don't produce uh, any um, morphological features yes sir so only way of uh, the, the, even the cryptic species we will have to look at them only from a molecular angle that's fine fair enough yeah, yeah. thank you sir thank you for your clarification yeah. uh, dr bhavik shaka do you have any questions or comments thank you thank you uh, dr sir thank you dr but thank you what i can say i i, I am uh, means it was an amazing talk very simplistic i think i have to learn many concepts and then relearn uh, those things uh, kind of thing and uh, very inspiring session i i would uh, sir very inspiring session for the youngsters and even for the us just who need to work towards the morphology and morphology has to be there it it will be the uh, what i even what uh, dr rajesh was saying that even with the sequencing thing morphology will remain the end point yeah. wherever uh, without that we cannot go away with it and uh, because uh, that will be the ultimate thing that has to be there even with the sequencing thing thank you thank you so much uh, dr Bersa. thank you so much for yeah, the it's talk. my pleasure uh, Raj, you know, rohit because uh, you uh, I, I must tell that i am silently listening many lectures earlier what you people were organizing wonderful it is because uh, so that's why it's a pleasure great pleasure yeah thank you sir thank you professor shishipology please <laughs> <laughs> professor shishipala are you there okay dr sunil shivasto please Okay, first uh, Professor Shishipala. Sorry, I, I, mute, I had muted everybody. Now you can speak. Professor Shishipala, please. Sir, Namaste, sir. Namaste. <laughs> sir, it was an excellent session. Though it is related to what Dr. Rajesh said earlier. For example, uh, microscopy is available in most of the laboratories, whereas molecular aspects are not available. Uh, most of them are outsourced. So the student will not have the feel for the work done, though he gets the data, whether ITS screening or uh, other molecular data. But the problem with the referees, journal referees, mm -hmm. even journal of basic microbiology, if you send microscopic morphological identification criteria, they would ask for molecular data. This is a bit... Uh, pushing the students towards molecular uh, taxonomy because the referees are insisting a piece of advice uh, from you would be helpful for all of us. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, I, I didn't attend your lecture today because I was tied up somewhere else, but I have heard you on the topic what you spoke earlier. So Thank you, sir. I know. Uh, yes. I know this uh, picture that uh, many journals, they ask for uh, molecular sequence data because that is the rule after the IB uh, International Botanical Congress held in Melbourne that uh, 2011, one fungus, one name. And they also said after 2013, uh, you should, we should have the sequence data for any of the fungi described. Um, I think that is a that is why they are insisting on many of these journals which are you know recognized journals. But um, I think 
one way of doing this is you collaborate with the people see collaboration should be the rule in future if we, most of us should try to uh, collaborate then you will have more publications quicker publications rather than okay i will do this uh, when i have a little more time then by doing this collaborative exercise or some labs not only you will have the advantage of having sequencing this if you do the good microscopic work and uh, get the culture done i'm sure un until then uh, i personally advise that in future we should have the both morphology and molecular sequence otherwise it is not a complete exercise thank you sir thank you uh, dr sunil sunil srivastava ji please ट Uh, yes i think the serial dilution the serial dilution method han ji sir yes sir is if you look at the some uh, earlier you know methods there is a warp up oh. splitting method you know do you know that okay okay sir uh, so yeah i uh, i have we have did the uh, paper warp up method but i have not done this method sir i'm yeah. actually doing the serial method. dilution method okay um, in the sediments if you take the serial dilution i think that's a good method and you need to yeah, serially yeah. dilute it until you get very few colonies yes, up to then that. you will be able to isolate the fungi yeah. yes 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 so is is this an ideal method sir i i, I is one of the methods you know serial dilution okay. is one of the okay. methods okay. but it's a good method yes Oh, thank you sir. and uh, my other question sir i have two more questions can i ask you at this from yes yes please sir as you said that uh, uh, before culturing on any media you we have to culture the fungi on water agar hai isn't it sir so uh, uh, can i use the yes, lake I water lake water agar for for culture the uh, fungi sir can i use the water hmm. like lake water no no sterilized water you see why i said water agar because fungus grows very slowly hmm. there you see so okay, you okay, you will be able to isolate easily suppose you grow in a way highly oh. nutrient medium then the all the hmm. fungi will go together okay. there's a competition you will it will be very difficult to isolate the fungi and if you put water agar and these fungi will grow very slowly and or half time by which you can make the fungus to grow slowly and isolate that should be our aim as many fungi as possible we should isolate from a sample okay sir thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you thank you sir Thank you, Don Mahavinit. Please. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, respected sir, for such a wonderful talk. It was really inspiring, and uh, I truly agree with you that there is no better feeling than uh, observing a slide under a microscope or a fungus under a microscope. It's just something else. Yeah. My question is, sir. Uh, I work with endophytes, and uh, yeah, sir, and and. what i have found that uh, even though uh, 
traditionally it is reported as uh, sporulating fungi the endophytes usually do not produce uh, spores so uh, what would be a good method uh, to induce sporulation because i was working with xyleria once uh, for my phd and uh, I tried a lot of method it, that was suggested in the literature, uh, being it uh, exposing to UV rays or very minimal uh, sugar media, uh, but I couldn't uh, uh, get sporulation. So can you suggest a very good method to induce sporulations in, uh, uh, in endophytes, especially if uh, we can induce uh, sexual stage and what will be a good method to induce sexual stage? I, I honestly don't know the any method where you can uh, you know, force the fungus to reproduce sexually. Okay. But we did some exercises when we were, you know, in our uh, work. Suppose you take a petri plate with a culture, a culture which is not producing any spores. What you t you take a sterile needle and streak them. Okay. And you will see wherever you have streaked, the fungus is producing its spores. Maybe asexual, sometimes even sexual. Okay. Because, or you put it in a, give it a cold shock, put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours and okay. remove them. See, these many of these fungi, they are forced to reproduce sexually when they are put into stress, environmental stress, okay. or physical stress. Physical stress, I meant, if you streak them many you know i have many fungi i have seen they wherever you have streaked them in those edges they produce their perithesia okay, okay. but i don't know about xyleria okay. because okay. xyleria so, you know you you will have to see some of the papers of mark stedler yeah. 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 an expert on uh, so, xyleria is fungi sure sir, sure i'll look into it i have one more question sir uh if I want to explore, uh, suppose a, a conserved rainforest, or suppose a, a suppose a particular area, let's say Western Ghats. So, is it right, like ethically right, if, if I go there and collect samples, or I will have to take prior permissions from the forest department or uh, other authorities? And what's the procedure that we can follow it? Yes, you need to take the permission. You must apply to the. Um, state wildlife bio, uh, you know bi 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 biodiversity authority then state biodiversity authority or the forest department and forest department and um, you must take permission because this is the rule okay. in the entire country to that. and uh, i think most of them for educational purposes they give the permission through your official channel if you contact them they give permission and uh, I think that is the rule in the entire country today. And okay. it is important. See, in the earlier days, these kind of permissions were uh, not required. Not required from 1972, I know. But we were, they were at linear. But these days, in view of the, you know, Wildlife Protection uh, Act, it's very important that we take permission. And we also tell them what we have collected. These are all certain rules which we should follow. If you go to their website, they tell you these rules. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anywhere in the country, you should take the permission. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Chino. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sunil Srivastava, please. Dr. Sunil, Sunil Srivastava, can you hear uh, us? Yeah, 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 Professor Labada. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, my gratitude to you and Professor Bhatt. Uh, and your entire team. This is truly a masterclass. Your message is very relevant and well taken. And I really appreciate the the, the messages given by Professor Bhatt, especially in his last slide. That should be a motivation uh, for many of the students. I am also an educationist. I also teach mycology and my passion to teach. Uh, I totally agree. And uh, with what Dr. Bhatt has said, it's a holistic approach. And but, uh, but my message is just a comment that it should start with preparing the media, uh, letting uh, know the students how to prepare media, how to examine slides, 
a culture which yeah. we are gradually losing. Uh, people are more interested in sitting on the computer and just going without even seeing who the hero or heroine is of the world and just going uh, to the DNA level and try to do that. But, well, uh, uh, my again comment is that Professor Shinoi has given uh, a lot of importance to such legendaries to bring them to the forum to let the people know what all traditional mycology has been. It's not only that we are just at the numerical taxonomy and other things, but uh, to motivate the students to know from the stall words, to, from, to know from the legends as to what is the thrill, what is the enthusiasm of sitting on the microscope, drawing sketches with camera lucida in earlier days, and now we have better tools. But uh, this is a very, very inspiring journey, Professor Bhatt. And I thoroughly Thank enjoyed you. the thing. And I'm sure many students would have learned from your lecture. It was truly a master class. Thank you, Ram. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really uh, and I, I believe that what Professor Shino is doing is very, very important because yeah. you have to know what, how to prepare media, how to examine a slide like what Professor Bhatt just mentioned, the way he developed that method of uh, uh, under the professor under the under the leadership of Professor Late C. V. Subramaniam, whom I uh, I have learned all this science word book, all these books I have studied very very thoroughly. And I enjoyed it, but I, the same spirit I don't find amongst the students now. And here is where the students can learn a lot from your journey. So, uh, but uh, having said that, it's not only the traditional, and because it's very, very confusing and it doesn't, it's a full maze if you just get into the morphology. So the the present times, as you said, we have to move with times, and people should be taught about genomics about uh, molecular taxonomy and proteomics. The other day, the next, uh, yesterday I, I heard Professor Shishupal on Maldi talk. So it was a fascinating lecture with a lot of proteomic information. We can gain so much huge information about mycology and all the metabolites and all that, which, which will lead us finally to come to a conclusion that what it is we are dealing with. Yeah. So, uh, Everything holistic, right from morphology, genomics, proteomics, nothing can be ignored. I'm so happy that you are teaching your students, you have a passion, and you're taking a holistic approach for this. And I was fascinated by your school, which you visit. So uh, in your slides also, I found the names that you've chosen are very Indian and not very Western. So that, that speaks volumes of your passion for your culture and uh, the roots that you have. Thank you so much. Very good lecture. Thank you so much. For Thank, you, sir. Thank you. Kiran Thomas, please ask your question. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, yes. Sir, have you worked on uh, isolation of fungi in uh, marine environment? Um, very little. We did, but uh, not much, I think, because you see, I, I also want to tell you something else. Why we didn't do many other things. Um, I did some work along with a student of mine in when I was in Eritrea, that is African, from the Red Sea, Masawa port. We did some sampling. We wrote also a paper on the marine fungi those days. It was in 1980s. When I came to Goa, uh, National Institute of uh, Oceanography had a very good mycology section with the Dr. Raghu Kumar and group. So when someone else is working on that area, I didn't want to you know, repeat that exercise because when you start this new area, we will be 10 years behind. So we didn't want to do that. and But we had a lot of interaction. So I know what's happening in marine fungi and uh, lots of good work is going on both in here, then in Pondicherry University with the Professor Sharma's group. So great work is going on. I, I know, sir, what is uh, 
but I didn't do much work here. Okay, thank you, sir. What was the isolation technique uh, used, sir, uh, in that area, that Red Sea area? You so you did. Yeah, we used uh, you know typical agar medium, but serial dilution. No, no, no. We mostly worked on the um, driftwoods. Okay. We didn't work on these uh, soil uh, Mostly on the driftwoods we work. And we used the seawater agar medium for isolation okay. of those fungi. One of my students called Tekonin Nakaste, one uh, Ethiopian student, he did some work. He made a presentation of that in a Canadian conference. And we wrote one paper those days. And uh, good work we have did. But I didn't continue that work because there are lots of work is going on here. But it's a very fascinating area, marine fungi. OK, sir. Thank you. The session was very wonderful. Uh, I, I was very inspired being a, bin, being a beginner and uh, to see uh, a person of this age still being engaged in this. It's very inspiring. Thank you. All the best, Kiran. You know? Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank we you. really want some of you to take up this job. And uh, you are most welcome to you know sometimes to ask any uh, interact with us because it also inspires us, you know. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And we like to you, sir. Thank you. All Thank the you. best for you. Thank, Thank you. you. So the last question is from Dr. Antaj Tarafdar. Antaj, can you hear us? Antaj Tarafdar, can you hear us? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, please do ask your question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you very much for giving me the chance uh, and very nice presentation. Now I am in China just because of Dr. Shenai, sir. Actually helped me a lot during my after my PhD. I have done PhD uh, from the University of Calcutta, um, oh. Agaricus. And uh, here in China, uh, now uh, actually uh, Dr. Uh, Professor uh, but sir, actually you are really very famous in China. <laughs> now I am in Guizhou University. I am uh, working on moral disease with uh, Professor Hyde Group. And uh, here, yes, uh, and my professor, my supervisor is uh, Professor Yong Wang. And oh. sir, I, I, I want to uh, ask sir one question. Actually, someone actually asked me how to identify fossil fungi. So I have no idea. Actually, you are the actually real mycologist, and so I, I need sir, some suggestions so that I can spread the suggestion to someone and someone students here. Okay. So please give me suggestion. I, I I also don't know anything about much about uh, you know fossil fungi. I only read about them. <clears throat> there is one uh, student from. Uh, she may be in uh, Kunming University presently. What is her name? We call her as me. Okay. Uh, you know, do you know her? Yam I. Her, her surname, I mean, her uh, pet name. Uh, Damodar, do you know her? Yes, sir. We know her. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sinamon or something, her name, full name. Now, she did some, um, the some work on fossil fungi, carbon dating of that, you know. Uh, she's the best one presently known to me. So you should contact her. I think she, either she is in, uh, in Chiang Mai University in Thailand. Oh, yeah. You know? uh, I can get her full name for you. If you write me a mail, I will give her name, mail and ID, you know. Okay, okay, sure, sir. Yeah. So tomorrow, tomorrow I'll go to Kunming. Now I am in Guizhou. Uh, okay. Guizhou province. Uh, so I'll come back uh, for winter vacation for one month, uh, uh, coming uh, 10th on 10th January. My flight is from Kunming. So I'll go, go to tom uh, tomorrow, Kunming. And, and, and lastly, I would like to actually, uh, really, I am very thankful to Professor uh, Dr. Senai, sir. Actually, <laughs> uh, he actually have given uh, the recommendation and professor sham samanta also and uh, professor uh, professor jayaram bhat sir is 
really you are really very famous in china and so <laughs> sir, i know I, most of them were my you know we all worked together in uh, dr sam then yes, yes. Uh, host of them his wife pai all of them are known to me very closely because they were all students when i was in uh, thailand uh, up post retirement time and uh, excellent workers they are amazing workers yes yeah. so i i need your constant support and blessings and i i am the i am i am actually uh, actually new in the field of mycology so i i i i want to be a good mycologist like you and dr senai sir <laughs> so sure sure uh, yes uh, and wish you all the best keep in touch yeah i'm very happy that you are working over there yeah good good okay saptashi mukherjee sorry uh, last last really last last question saptashi okay uh, no more uh, rohit yeah. rohit sharma you want to ask your question you raised uh, your hand yeah 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 i i just has uh, uh, dr uh, dr bhatsar has just mentioned about the uh, for the uh, sporulation of some of the fungi that we need to do two techniques he just mentioned one of the sticking into the agar uh, water agar media and second is the cold shock given so is there any other things that we can follow because this is a problem that uh, really we face a lot when we isolate some of the fungi see the, the, the uh, we used to play with these cultures um <clears throat> sorry i and my students we used to play with these cultures in different methods because unless we have the <clears throat> sorry sporulation we can't identify morphologically that is the biggest setback with the morphological <laughs> methods also and if you look at the endophytes most of them they shy away from sporulating in culture medium so we must play with them you know uh, i know someone from um, who is this so i forgot the name some mc srinivasan no 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 some professor from uh, uh, madhya pradesh you know the rani durgaon i forgot his name what they used to do they used to put the take the petri plate uh, sterile made you know you will see the only the mycelial plate and flood them with the sterile water for a couple of hours and remove the drain off all the water and keep the petri plate and that kind of treatment also they used to try and they used to see sporulation after few days now what triggers the fungus to sporulate we'll only have to play with that uh, this is the this is what i would say but okay. then Sir, in spite I... of that these fungi may refuse to sporulate yeah 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 Yeah. Sir, Because if I, if I am permitted, yeah. hello, sir. If I am permitted, I would supplement. Yeah, please. Uh, some uh, fungi like alternary and all, uh, which they doesn't sporulate much in the medium, they grow in water agar, and uh, the uh, process of progress of the mycelial growth, they keep sterile uh, leaf blades yes. of grass. When uh, right. the fungus finds it difficult. i tend to uh, grow over the grass a uh, sterile grass and immediately sporulates we yes. were able to induce uh, sporulation in bipolaris and alternaria using this method yes um, thank you professor shishwala see this is what the method many of us also did we used to put some sterile uh, you know hosts suppose we isolate this from grass you sterilize those grass leaves or gas stubbles and put them in the uh, small pieces you put on the surface of the agar plate or get it embedded in the medium then you will see the sporulation after few days all the edges of this grass plates yeah. so that's an interesting technique and which we follow here yes okay okay ladies and gentlemen i must uh, stop yes. this Question. I'm so sorry that uh, we will not be able to take up more questions or comments or uh, your views. But Professor Bert is available on our Micro India WhatsApp group. Yeah. He will be happy to answer any uh, all the pending questions there. Please do yes, yes. Or you can send him an email. Uh, he will be happy to reply to your queries. And uh, we will share the PPT. I think Professor Bert it will be okay. I guess. Yes, yes. 
will Please. share the slides and uh, this video will be available on our our micro asia youtube cha channel so it will be uh, probably up by may in 24 hours uh professor but uh, i mean it was a master class and that's that was the plan thank you very much <laughs> thank and, you uh, thanks for uh, the yeah. opportunity yeah and uh, this uh, video recording will be a great resource for the you know future of my colleges uh, and uh, you have spent a couple of uh, not a couple of more than a couple of years with us and uh, you have shared your experience uh, shared your works uh, and um, it, it meant, uh, you have, have got some good advices for the young people uh, we, we are very much uh, thankful to you you know uh, we look forward to your uh, continued guidance and uh, you know your blessings okay thank you very much professor but Thank you, and uh, thanks for all of you who have attended. And uh, once again, I want to tell you that uh, I will be available for any assistance. I said in the beginning, and I'll repeat that. So you are free to write uh, some mail if you have some difficulty. Let it be even a very silly point also, no problem to write to me. And if what I know, I will share, because that is how we should uh, progress in future. So. I also thank all of you for your patient listening, uh, hearing, and uh, thank you, Damodar. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. I will meet you in Goa soon. Uh, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now I will share the link to the uh, feedback form. And you are, we appreciate your feedback. And uh, if you are interested to receive a cert participation certificate, please submit this feedback form. Fill this form in next 15 minutes because we don't want somebody to misuse this feedback, you know, system. You know. Please, thank you so much. Thank you. So I take leave of you now. Yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. And best wishes to every one of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <clears throat>